Therapy Considerations for Your Patient Going Home with Non-Invasive Ventilation by Lauren Perlman. Hi, my name is Lauren Perlman. I'm a respiratory care practitioner here at Boston Children's Hospital. I will be discussing non-invasive ventilation, including BiPAP and CPAP. More specifically, considerations for your patient using these therapies in the hospital and transitioning to home. I have no financial disclosures. There are several considerations when choosing the appropriate device for use in the home, including the patient's age and weight, the patient's developmental age, can your patient remove their interface, can your patient sustain normal breathing without support in the event of a power failure at home, does your patient's device require a power failure alarm and backup battery power, does the backup battery power need to be integrated into the device? Does your patient require their support during the day? How significant is their level of support and more importantly, their oxygen requirement? Does your patient require more than one level of support? Do you anticipate the placement of a tracheostomy tube in the near future? What is the designated caregiver's ability to learn this new care? Will your child and family benefit from time at a rehabilitation facility prior to going home? There are FDA regulations on the use of ventilators, BiPAP, and CPAP devices. The lowest FDA approval is currently 5 kilograms. The approvals vary by device. The equipment companies do offer a waiver that can be signed by the guardian such that the equipment can be used off-label or out of weight range. The equipment companies may consider patients for discharge under 5 kilograms if there are specific considerations such as hospice care. Can your patient remove their interface if the power fails in the home? This may be due to age, developmental age, or disease process such as those with neuromuscular disease. If it has been determined that they require both their nose and mouth to be covered for therapy, they are considered to be at higher risk both in the event of power failure but also due to the risk of aspiration of oral or gastric fluids. Please do periodically consider the use of a nasal interface and perhaps a chin strap to minimize air leaks out of their mouth. The options are to choose a device with a power failure alarm, a power failure alarm and battery that can then be attached to the device, or a device with integrated backup battery power and alarms. Although it seems like a simple choice, there are further considerations as the devices with integrated power and alarms are now considered ventilators with additional cost and more importantly, they require significantly more caregiver education. These more expensive devices will require more documentation as to why your patient needs this type of device to obtain approval from the insurance agencies. Obtaining this approval may delay discharge from the hospital as compared to the use of the more simple devices. If your patient can be without support overnight in the event of a power failure in the home and they have a nasal interface, you may choose a simple device without specific alarms or battery backup for ease of use. When a patient cannot be without support either overnight or for those that use support during the day, use two levels of support such as an overnight mask ventilation and daytime mouthpiece ventilation, or you believe that a tracheostomy will be considered in the near future, the decision is clear. They will require a ventilator type of device for their support. In our area, the Philips Respironics Trilogy and the ResMed Astral are available for use. These ventilators offer the choice of a passive circuit such as utilized with BiPAP technology in which one hose is attached to the patient interface and exhalation takes place in the mask through specific venting holes and they also offer an active or a dual limb ventilator configuration as we are familiar with on our ICU ventilators, the CareFusion LTV and the Newport series of ventilators. The most important consideration when deciding about these options is your patient's oxygen requirement. It's difficult to provide more than about 40% oxygen when using the high flow BiPAP passive circuitry in the home setting. The passive circuitry flow of air significantly dilutes the liters of oxygen that are added 
to the circuit to meet your patient's needs. The passive circuit with high flow rate is specifically designed to compensate for air leaks as it was created and designed for patients with facial interfaces and not tracheostomy tubes. The ventilators with active circuits such as we use in the hospital setting can provide non-invasive ventilation by facial interface with high oxygen levels, but the patient may require the use of a mask over nose and mouth due to the air leak around the mask, in particular when they are asleep. Of note, our Trilogy ventilators here at Boston Children's require oxygen to be bled in such as it is in the home setting. Patients requiring more than approximately 40% oxygen will be on the Philips Respironix V60 device not designed for home use. Additional considerations when dealing with infants and children are the patient's ability to trigger on a breath when using BiPAP support. If the infant or child is unable to initiate the support, it is recommended that you set the backup breath rate just below the patient's spontaneous breath rate. The ventilator type of devices, such as the Trilogy or Astral, do seem to respond to our littlest and weakest patients with regard to being able to initiate and trigger their support. It's important to pay special attention to skin care. If possible, having two different interfaces that may have different contact points on the face can reduce skin irritation. Our recommended skin barrier product is Mepilex Lite, which has a mild adhesive property and can be cut to fit under the interface at skin contact points. Education for your patient and family will be provided by our children's staff and their home care company. The patient may qualify for block nursing care in the home. Please do consult with their case manager to discuss this as an evaluation from the payer and then determination of hours of help come first and then the nursing agencies will be contacted to find help for your patient. Non-invasive support on our patient population is no easy task for our families. Spending time at a local rehabilitation facility may be warranted to establish all of the supports needed for home. It's important to be very clear when ordering BiPAP or CPAP. We routinely provide a backup rate here at Children's. This requires the mode be referred to as ST or spontaneous timed. The devices that provide ST mode versus S mode are more expensive, thus your order must specify that you are ordering a backup rate, thus the ST mode. You will order a mode such as CPAP or BiPAP without a rate or BiPAP ST. You will need to specify with BiPAP the backup rate and the inspiratory and expiratory pressures. When ordering CPAP or BiPAP on a ventilator type of device, there are more specific parameters to order such as rise time, flow termination, etc. Please do speak with your respiratory therapist to determine what must be ordered when using a ventilator type of device. For oxygen orders, please do provide a range of liter flow with oxygen saturation parameters such as 0 to 5 liters per minute to maintain oxygen saturations of 92 to 96%. Please consider the use of oximetry as an adjunct alarm for your patient going home with CPAP or BiPAP. If your patient is very active during the use of support, there may be several false alarms and thus alarm fatigue in the home. Remember that if the child moves the interface from their nose or nose and mouth to their cheek, the device may not alarm as this is not seen as a disconnect situation. The apnea alarm use requires more consideration. As we discussed, some of our patients will be assisted by the device as they may not be able to consistently activate a supported breath. You do not want the device to sound an alarm every time the patient is unable to activate a breath unless you did not order a backup breath rate. Ventilators offer a multitude of alarms as they are used in various situations. Please order only what is necessary for the safety of your patient. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please help us improve the content by providing us with some feedback.